Welcome to Linda's Corner. My name is Linda Bjork, and today we're going to be talking about getting our voice back. I'm delighted to welcome special guest, Valeria Elliott. Valeria is also known as Ms. V, the storyteller, and she is an award-winning storyteller and the host of the Ms. V Storyteller Podcast. You can listen to Valeria's podcast on Spotify, and I'll include a link in the show notes. Welcome, Valeria. I'm so glad that you could join with me today. Thank you. I'm so excited to be here. I am too. I'm looking forward to hearing this story and about talking about getting our voice back, which is something that really resonates with me because that's something that I had to do. And this is something that you know about. What's your experience of kind of losing your voice and getting it back? Can we hear that? Sure. Well, I lost my voice at six. It was a decision I made as a child to stop talking. There was nothing physically wrong with me. It was totally out of um, family dynamics. And as a six-year-old, you know, how if you have children or everybody's been six, (laughs) the way that you think it was like, you know what, if I just don't say anything, I won't get into trouble and everything will be fine. So I stopped talking. I stopped talking at home and then it rolled over to school and I didn't get my voice back until I was 23. So I went through years of not talking, not being heard, being bullied, being pushed. Oh, all kinds of things. Because when you lose your voice, you have no self-esteem. You know, people realize, and then they're mean people. And when they realize that you're not a talker, you can't defend yourself. So they bully you. People will mistreat you, talk over you, make you feel like what you have to say is not important. And I went through that for a long time, even in my home. Now, there were people I did talk to, but those are people that I believe God sent to me. I believe that those are the people that God said, you know what? She needs someone. My auntie, she was my favorite auntie. Mm -hmm. I could be myself around her. You know, I had teachers who, although I didn't really talk in class, they saw something in me and they were able to make me talk to them or they could pull me and make me answer a question in class because I wasn't going to raise my hand. I wasn't going to bring attention to myself. That was not going to happen. So, you know, I had people that I could go to, but for the most part, I would be in the room and you wouldn't know I was there. Hmm. Boy, this sounds so incredibly familiar. Really? Because when I was six years old, there was also some family dynamics, something that took place. And my interpretation, I mean, because you have things, it happened, what is what is, Mm -hmm. but what I interpreted is, oh, oh, I have no value. What I want doesn't matter. What I think doesn't matter. Absolutely. No one cares. I am completely invisible. So I will just stay out of your way. And so as you're talking about this, I don't know what it is about our development and being six years old, but there's something (laughs) I've talked to other guests who've had issues. And when it's six, something, there's something going on in our brains. And if we can make these decisions like, oh, I don't talk. And your brain says, okay, new program accepted. We don't talk. Uh, What you, you think and what you want doesn't matter. In fact, Don't even worry about what you want and what you think. Mm -hmm. It's completely and totally irrelevant. So just ignore all that. And then when you finally kind of wake up decades later, if Mm -hmm. ever, then you think, what do I like? I have absolutely no idea. Am I allowed to like things? Am I allowed to want things? Did you go through that? Well, for me, um, I got my voice back when I became a Christian Mm -hmm. and I was tired of I got to the point where I was tired of being mentally, physically just abused by people. And I got on my knees and I prayed and I asked the Lord, I said, Lord, please give me my voice back. I am so tired, tired of being this way. I know this is not the way that you designed me to be. You know, I know this, this can't be what you have for me. And God answered my prayers. Now I will tell anybody when you pray, be careful how you pray. Because when I prayed, God gave me my voice and I went from not talking at all to cussing people out. (laughs) I went to laying people out. I was going to get you before you got me. And all of that was from out of hurt. 
all the hurt that I had and endured, now I'm attack mode. And now I'm treating people just like they treated me. And I became that person, those mean people. And I remember I was at a game. um, I think it was a football game. I never forget it. God allowed me to hear myself who I had become. And I didn't like it. I cried. I was like, oh my God, I have just become those mean people, those bullies, those people who hurt me. Now I'm one of them. And I got back down on my knees and I was like, Lord, I cannot be her. I don't like her. I don't like the way she is. I don't want to go back to the non-talker, but I don't like this person. I don't like the way I feel. God answered my prayers a second time. Now, I am not 50-50, y'all, because you catch me on a bad day. (laughs) That other one might come out, but we are human. That happens to everyone. You know, if you catch anybody, you know, if you catch Jesus on a bad day, you know, you never know what's going to happen. But I'm a lot better than I was. I'm so much better than I was. And the fact that I'm sitting here talking to you lets you know, you know, I have my voice back and I am using my voice for good because that's what God said. Now that you have your voice back, I want you to use your voice to help other people who's lost their voice. I want you to share with them your stories. I want you to share with them, you know, the process and the things that you went through to show them, first of all, you're not perfect. You know, nobody's perfect. And don't think, you know, oh, you know, she has her voice back. I know everything's going to know it's not. <laughs> it's not. It's like an everyday thing. And I had to give myself affirmations. I had to write my own personal affirmations. I know they're out there, but I wanted, what I did was I wrote down things that I wanted to hear someone say to me, things that was going to encourage and lift me up. So I told myself, you are beautiful. Yeah, you're fluffy, but you're beautiful. What you have to say, it is important. You deserve, you're supposed to be in this room. If nobody likes it, they can leave, but you're supposed to be there. So I had this internal dialogue that I tell myself so that I won't go back to the non-talker. Oh, I love this. You just (laughs) excite me. I just want to reach out and give you a big hug. So all of these things, there's so many things that we can talk about because of this experience that we've had. And so what you experienced of, of, of being silent and then swinging that pendulum completely the other way and then being able to come back to the center again. It's kind of beautiful that it was a process and that it was, I'm not 50, 50. (laughs) I'm more, I'm I'm a little bit, I'm going to tell you, be honest, I'm about a good, strong 75-ish. So I'm right there on 75. 75% cranky? No, 75% better. Oh, 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 oh. there's 25% of the cusser outer in me. Oh, 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 oh. okay. <laughs> so 20, 75% on, on the good side and, and 25% still, I would like to, you know, chew on your face a little bit if you're yeah. annoyed. I would, I would tell you off if you catch me on a bad day. I'm working <laughs> on that. <laughs> I'm working on it. <laughs> And, and these things happen and we're not perfect. And if we, we, we do our very best to be able to control our tongue, because what we say really, really matters. And yet, if we do make a mistake, we have that option of apologizing. And that is, I mean, that's a tool that we all need to have in our tool belt because none of us get through. I don't even get through a whole day without making a mistake or saying something wrong or doing something Mm -hmm. wrong. So that's a, I'm terribly sorry. I didn't mean to hurt your feelings. I am whatever. And then, you know, but we can, we can do that and we can do better. And I loved that the way that you pulled out of this is through a prayer and through asking God, you know, I get to talk to these amazing, wonderful professionals from all different fields. And I get to talk to doctors and I get to talk to psychiatrists and I get to talk to life coaches and, and all of these wonderful people. And one of my guests was this lovely doctor and she had practiced for 40 years. And she said, you know, here's a couple things that I've learned. She said, when, uh, first of all, about 80, 85% of the things that we go to the doctor for have roots in stress Stress. or childhood trauma, Mm -hmm. some trauma that we have, uh, we have 
has become manifest in a physical form. Mm -hmm. And she said, so, and that's one thing absolutely true. And then she said, the other thing is when she got her faith back, she said, I realized that if we take care of that one, if we get our spiritual life in a good place, she said, the physical, the mental, the emotional, Mm. social, even the financial, she said, things fall into place. So I talk to all kinds of people who are ready to receive whatever you're ready to receive. That's fine. If you don't want to talk about faith, no problem. We won't go there. But if you are willing, this is the most powerful tool that we can offer. And I think that that is really important for people to understand. So thank you for being a witness of that and saying, Hey, you know what? this made a difference and you were willing to change or whatever you were willing to change. That's what you got. It's like, okay, I want my voice. Okay. Now I want my voice to be nice, Mm -hmm. but, but heard, you know what I mean? So, oh, beautiful, beautiful. I'm so proud of you. Thank you. Thank you so much. But you know, what's so amazing about that is that I thought that I had my full voice back and I didn't, I didn't realize until recently And I just appreciate, I'm a God girl. So no matter where I go, whatever, God is going to come out of my mouth at some point, (laughs) because if it wasn't for him, I would not be here because there were several times when I was going through stuff that, you know, I wanted to end it because I felt so bad, Mm -hmm. but because of God, he was like, Nope, I have work for you to do. I need you to go out and help people. So here, let's, let's fix this. But I thought that I had my full voice back. And about two months ago, I realized I didn't have my full voice around my family. Mm. I still allowed them to treat me certain ways and I didn't speak up. And that's what they were used to. They, you know, I have two older siblings and I have a younger one now. And the younger one, him and I, we are very close. And so he didn't, he didn't treat me that way as much as the older two did. did. Gotcha. And um, I got off the phone, I think it was, well, I had three different conversations. And when I got off the phone, I was like, why didn't you say anything? Why didn't you defend yourself? Why didn't you stand up? And that little girl, the six-year-old, she was there. And I went back and I was like, oh my God. I cannot believe that just happened. And then God was like, yeah, you have your voice with the world, but you don't have it with your family and you need that because those are the closest people to you and they have a tendency can be the people that hurt you the most because they're close to you. Right. You have to learn how to stand up for yourself, watch your tone. And God just helped me with the whole thing. And I was able to do that. I was able to do, do it with my older brother. We had a conversation on the phone. And when it turned and I didn't respond in the same way that I would normally do, he did not know how to take me. <laughs> he, did, he, he just didn't know because he was so used to the old me. And I was like, I cannot allow you to continue to treat me this way. I, I'm tired. I can't. And I did. I told him, I said, I love myself too much to allow you to be disrespectful to me. I love myself too much to allow you to continue to talk down to me. I'm your sister and I deserve respect because I give you respect. And I'm telling you it threw him. My sister was the same way. She was on the phone and I was very calm. God gave me the right tone. He gave me the right words to say. And I was like, oh my, and I felt so good when I finished because now it's like, I realize it. So when they come, I'm ready and I'm never disrespectful to them. I'm never nasty. I'm never me. It's always out of love and compassion for them and for me because I deserve, I don't treat you that way. So please don't treat me that way. And it took those conversations for me to realize and God helped me with each and every one of them. And I feel right now that I have all of my voice back because any family member, you know, I'm not going to take it anymore. Any, anyone, my mom, none of them, you know, I'm, I, I, I can't, I love myself too much to know. And I don't deserve to be mistreated. Wow. I just want to shout (laughs) from the rooftops. 
Because what you're saying is 100% true. And the cool thing is, it's not only true for Valeria right here. It's also true for every person who is listening and all of the people who even aren't listening, that we have inherent value. Value. Until we recognize that Mm -hmm. and claim it, then we allow ourselves to get into very awful situations. In fact, we often go back to them and sometimes we even seek them out because we feel like that's what we deserve. Mm-hmm. I deserve to be treated like a, you know, a doormat and, and that's all I'm worthy of. So I will put myself in situations. So that waking up and claiming your, right. your, uh, your right to be respected is amazing. That's amazing. It's empowering. Yes. It is very empowering because you feel such a freedom and you like, you look at yourself and I look at myself, you go girl, you did that. <laughs> you go girl, you <laughs> did that. And I, even my internal dialogue comes back in. I was um, in a meeting, uh, a business meeting a couple of days ago. Mm-hmm. And that little girl was trying to come back. It was like, why are you in this room? And I was like, I deserve, I answer her because she's gone. I was like, I deserve to be here. I walked right in there just like I owned the room. And I did my portion of what I needed to do. I asked questions. I stood up for myself. I was just, I stood right up there. I wasn't like some people say, you know, the angry black woman or the angry woman, you know, because women feel like we have to be a certain way when we're around in a room full of men, you oh. know, we have to be a certain way. I, no. And I was professional. My tone never changed. I work so hard on my tone because people receive you better when you have the right tone. Even what, even if what you're saying is not so nice, your tone, and I use humor. I use humor for every, everything because when I walked into the media, I said, good Lord, I feel like I'm going to the um, principal's office. All y'all looking around so serious, <laughs> and I, you know, and it made them laugh. So I use my humor. Sometimes I use sarcasm you know, depends on the person, but I walked in and when I left out of there, I was like, you did that girl. You did that. You showed them that you belonged in the room and they are going to respect you even more. And they do. They were calling me today and emailing me. And, you know, they was like, Valeria, I need you to do this. And, oh, thank you so much. And they texting me and everything. I was like, that's because you stood up for yourself and you wanted that meeting and you showed them that you are smart, that you are valuable and you deserve to be in the room. Magical. Absolutely magical. <laughs> okay. I love this so much. So let's talk a little bit more because I love this clarification about what, because we talked about empowering. This is really about getting our power back because when you feel small, invisible, insignificant, not good enough, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, is you feel powerless and we have to get our power back. And then we, maybe if we haven't had a lot of experience of what power looks like, what it feels like, then we don't know how to do it right. Like you mentioned your first experience of my voice back, my power, power looks like this. It's cranky. It's loud. It's in your face. I'm going to tell you like it is. And that is a form of power, but it's not what I want to be. And so here you are, you've, you've fine tuned it with confidence not arrogance, but confidence. Like Mm -hmm. I deserve to be in this room. I belong. And then you brought it with kindness, with clarity, with humor, and you brought yourself and the gifts that you have to bring to the table and they were enough, you know? And so I think that's so, so, so helpful. If, if anyone is, you know, trying to, I see lots of different kinds of people who are trying to get their power back or trying to demonstrate power. And oftentimes it comes across as loud and angry and obnoxious Negative. very much because that's kind of what they experience. That, exactly. Either that's what when they, they don't talk, that's what you guess. Or, you know, if I, if I'm, if I'm really mad. I feel powerful. And that's actually true. We kind of do feel powerful mm-hmm. when we're mad, but it's it doesn't make the world a better place. You know what I mean? A bunch of angry people. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Oh, I love it. I love it. I love it. So now when you walk in the room and you're feeling like I, I got this and telling the little girl, no, this is not your time. This is not your place. Mm-hmm. Then um, do you want to describe kind of how that feels and help people who maybe haven't had that experience? It's like, okay, 
good power, real uh, confidence looks like this and it feels like this. So, well, what you, what you do, if you're starting out, you give yourself the affirmations, you tell yourself everything you want to hear, whether it's in the meeting or wherever you go, look yourself in the mirror and tell yourself that when you tell yourself enough times, it becomes a part of you because it's your own voice. You're listening to yourself and you're hearing positive things about yourself. And your voice is the most important voice to you because you're the one that has the words. Words have power. They can be good or bad. And you tell yourself, I tell my, my internal dialogue just clicks on. And when I'm getting ready to go into a meeting, I tell myself, you deserve to be there, girl. You are beautiful. You are fabulous. You are smart. All those things that I've told myself comes to me and I hold my head up and I walk in. And when I walk in, I don't feel that head pulling down, shoulders down, not looking people in the eye, sitting down, crossing my hands, being quiet, not looking people in the eye. I don't feel that. I don't feel that because I've told myself you deserve to be there and they should be happy you're there because you're an asset to them. They need you, you know, and I tell myself that and that's why I'm able to sit there and I do not feel bad. I will sit there. I look you right in your eye. I ask you questions, you know, and if it gets a little too tense in the room, I'm going to bust out with a joke because I don't like to be tense and I don't like to be all of that. So I might say something funny, you know, just to lighten the mood. But that's what I have been able to do for myself. And I love her. I love the new me. I love being there. So I'm able to send it out. They can see it. They can see the smile on my face. They can see the confidence in myself. And it's a feeling that you feel the inside because you've told yourself that you are worthy. You're great. You're wonderful. And believe what you say because you are. <laughs> so that's how I'm able to, to do that. And it's, it's just like a feeling of when your mom tells you you're, she's proud of you or your father says, I'm proud of you. That feeling is the feeling that you're going to get because you've told yourself, I am proud of you. You are beautiful. You are wonderful. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. Okay. So going through this process, do you say it like in the morning and at night? Do you tell yourself in the mirror? Do you um, say it in your mind throughout the day? Do you, I mean, kind of what's your routine? How do you get this in? Because going through this process of trying to get my voice back and trying to say nice things about myself when I first started oh my gosh, they felt like lies and I hated it. And it was like, I am worthy of being heard. You know, and it just felt like, blah, blah, blah. Um, and it took some practice. So it when does. you started, did, was it like, oh, I got this from the beginning or was it like, oh, I'm oh, no. awesome. No, no, lying, no. lying, lying. The lie alert was off. Beep, 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 beep. <laughs> No, and so it wasn't like that. In it, you know? No, it wasn't like that at all. What I did was I wrote it in the mirror. I wrote all those things that I wanted to hear in the mirror. And every day I would tell myself, even if I didn't believe it, you fake it until you make it. And I just kept telling myself that. I even took a picture of, I have um, affirmation on my phone. And if I'm going somewhere, I'm doing something, I, I start feeling that, that feeling, I pull it out and I look at it. You know, because there's some things that I don't remember all the time that I don't, you know, don't need to hear myself say. So I, I look at my affirmations. I mean, these are, and make sure you pick your own. Make sure it's something that you want to hear someone tell you, like, I'm proud of you. Well, tell yourself, I'm proud of you. I am proud of you. And say it like that, you know, and write it in the mirror, put it on your refrigerator, put it on wherever you need to it, constantly see it. And it's going to become a part of you. It is. Put it on your phone, you know, in the car, you know, even if you want to. And I've done this before. I've recorded myself on my phone telling myself the affirmations. And if I'm driving to work, I would turn it on and listen to my, me tell myself. Because I can't read it while I'm driving. But Thank I can you. hear it. <laughs> I can hear it. And it's in my ear. I put my earbuds on and I can hear and I, I keep telling myself that. And it, it, it is a beautiful thing. Just keep trying it. Fake it until you make it. Even if you don't believe it at first, probably by the end of the week, you're like, you know what? Mm, I 
am pretty. Look at that girl. <laughs> you are beautiful. You know, if you say that, that's you. You're going to hear it, you know, because if a man keeps telling you you're gorgeous and you're beautiful, you'll believe him if he keeps telling you over and over again. So tell yourself, I'm beautiful. I'm worthy. They deserve me. And I love that you brought up that we're hoping that other people are going to tell us these things. Mm -hmm. And yet I know when I was in that spot of feeling like, you know, Hey, I'm not worthy of whatever. If someone did say it rather than saying, thank you, I would think. No, no, because my brain just rejected compliment, any kind of anything, because I knew that that wasn't true, right? Six-year-old little me inside. And so it's so helpful. People want to be loved. We want to be loved. We want to be valued. We want to be appreciated. And a lot of times we look for that maybe in social media. Maybe if I, you know, take enough cute selfies, then people will say, oh, you look so good. I love your haircut or whatever it is. And, um, and if we don't get that response, it kind of hurts, but we're hoping that we'll get it from other people. And then if enough people say it, then we'll believe it. And the real answer, the shortcut is the one person that you need to love, value, and appreciate you is you. Is you. The Absolutely. One person that I need to love, value, and appreciate me is me. And then the magic happens is once you feel that, and then you're able to happily give compliments and to lift other people because you're in a great place. So thank you for bringing that up. Mag- I do want to say this though. It took, and I'm so glad you brought that part up because I was just like you were saying, when someone would give me a compliment, I would find something wrong with myself. And it took my best friend and my auntie to tell me. And my auntie, um, on my podcast, I share this story. She was blind and she could only, she could hear and her hearing was on spot. And she was listening to me one weekend. I used to go and take care of her on the weekends, take her shopping, all this. And every time someone gave me a compliment, she would hear me tell them something negative about myself. Mm -hmm. And when we got back home, she asked me, she said, why is it that every time your uncle told you that you were pretty today or you look good, you told him something negative about yourself? She said, you need to stop doing that. I was like, wow. A couple of days later, my best friend, we were on the phone talking and she was telling me something. She was like, girl, you did such a good job or I like the way you did this or whatever. And I kept doing the same thing. I kept finding something negative to say. I kept saying, drawing attention to something. Oh, I wish I had to did my hair different and whatever. And she said, listen, I want you to stop doing that. From now on, every time someone tells you something nice and positive about yourself, all I want you to do is say, thank you. My auntie said the same thing. Whether you believe it or not, you say thank you, period. Because that's their opinion and that's what they feel about you. You just say, thank you. It was like world changing for me. And I start doing that. And then it got to the point where, you know what? She is right. She's right. I am pretty, you know, and it, it took time, but I just started with baby steps, just saying, thank you. Even if I didn't feel it, even if I wanted to go there and say, you know, something negative, I didn't, I just said, thank you. And just shut my mouth. And then you'll start to believe it. Oh, love it. Love it. Love it. Love it. Love it. And I had a a similar experience where I, but I didn't, maybe you did or didn't recognize that you were doing it, but I didn't recognize I was doing it until someone pointed it out to me. Right. And they pointed it out to me because I didn't, I I did not. No idea that that's what I was doing. That was the reflex. Just, you know, Hey, you did a good job. No, I messed up here. Or, Hey, you look good. No, da, 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 da. And, and then it was my sister who said, you know, why, why do you do that? And I, I said, do what? I I didn't even know that I had just Mm -hmm. done it. And then she, she kind of said back what I did. And I thought, I have no idea. I have no idea why I do that. Because you've been doing it so long. I was the same way. I had been doing it so long. It was a part of me. So I never heard myself. I never heard me do it until someone brought it to my attention just like your sister. Oh, I'm so glad you had wonderful people in your (laughs) life. And I'm glad I had some wonderful people in my life. Yes. Just delighted. This message. We are beautiful women. We are bright. We are smart. Yes, we are. 
And isn't that wonderful to be able to say that? And when you say it, it feels true. Because there was a time where you could have said that and my brain would have gone the liar, liar alert. Mm -hmm. And now, and, and it's interesting, nothing has changed. It's not that I was all that garbage. <laughs> like I'm the same person. It's just the recognizing it and, and awakening, just awakening to our own value and our own worth. This is important message. So thank you so, so, so much. Is there anything else you want to make sure that we cover before we close today? No, I just want you to make sure that you use your voice. And I live by this. What I have to say is important. If it's not important to you, it's important to me. So say it and tell yourself that wherever you are, whatever the situation is, what you have to say is important. So say it, even if they don't like, you have a right to walk away. If somebody's saying something to you, you don't like, you walk away. They have a right to walk away, but it doesn't mean that what you have to say wasn't important. Maybe it was just wasn't for them. Maybe they weren't ready to hear what you have to say. You get it out of you, say it and hold your head up and just say, you know what? Oh, well, somebody else, just like this message and what I'm saying to you, everybody may not receive it. It's not for them. It's for the people who need to hear it. Exactly. And sometimes it's for the people who need to hear it and the people who are ready to hear it. Re oh my God. I'm glad you said that. Yes. You have to be ready. Right. Where you have that little feeling of something is off and, and we have to want to change. We have to, no one can heal without their consent. No one can, can gain their value without their consent. Like I, I was doing in the past, you know, don't compliment me. I've got to push myself back down to where I belong. You know, <laughs> I have to consent to saying, no, I, I have value. I have worth, and this is good. So thank you for bringing that up. Thank you for being you. Thank you for visiting with me. Oh, no problem. I love, and I have thoroughly enjoyed myself. I cannot wait for your listeners to hear this because I want, and I, my prayer has always been, and before I came on, I prayed, I was like, Lord, every person that needs to hear this message, please get it to the inbox, wherever it, however they need to hear it so they can hear it. And so that they can be healed and free and love themselves. Thank you. What a beautiful prayer. Thank you. You're welcome. In closing, I'd like to share a quote by Coco Chanel. She said, the most courageous act is to think for yourself aloud. Today, I invite you to be courageous enough to think for yourself and then to take it to the next level and use your voice. See you next time on Linda's Corner. Thanks for listening. If you enjoyed this episode of Linda's Corner, please share and subscribe to help us reach new listeners. I also invite you to check out my nonprofit, Hope for Healing, at the website hopeforhealingfoundation.org for free ebooks, free audiobooks, and other free resources to help increase happiness, build confidence and self esteem, strengthen relationships, manage stress, and calm feelings of depression and anxiety. I also invite you to grab a copy of one of my books, like Crushed A Journey Through Depression, or Amazon bestseller You Got This An Action Plan to Calm Fear, Anxiety, Worry, and Stress. See you next time on Linda's Corner.